Hello and welcome to the vault at the National World War II Museum. My name is Tom Chikansky and today I'd like to speak to you about one of our collections, trench art. What is trench art, you ask? Well, soldiers have often brought home souvenirs. Many times they bring home captured enemy equipment. But from time to time, soldiers have made their own souvenirs. As far back in history as the American Revolution, prisoners of war would take the bones from their meat ration and fashion them into models, often model ships. Later, during the American Civil War, soldiers took the lead bullets from their ammunition and carved them into small knickknacks and trinkets. But trench art really gets its start when, with the invention of the brass cartridge for artillery shells. In World War I, millions of these rounds were fired, producing lots of empty shells that soldiers could use to turn into art. The static nature of the war, uh, identified with the trench, gave it the title of trench art, with the idea that soldiers were sitting in their trenches, occupying their spare time making these things. That's probably not really the case. More often, items made in the rear areas, uh, sometimes shops set up. But this shell, a 75 millimeter round, manufactured originally in America, the shell, uh, is a great example of a typical piece of World War I trench art. One of the distinctive features of World War I trench art is the often used fluting of the shell. Well, of course, as you might imagine, gets started in World War I, continues in World War II, where there are even more shells fired, and because of the mechanized nature of the war, we have even more access to tools and equipment that can be used to manufacture these items. Now in World War II, one of the more common items in use is the 105 millimeter shell. This is a US shell complete with the round. And of course this green portion is fired and the brass shell remains. The 105 millimeter shell is used as divisional artillery in most of the armies in World War II, providing great material to be used. Of course, any size shell can be used, and they're turned into many different things. One of the most popular things is the ashtray. During World War II, over half the population of the United States smoked, and in 1943 alone, 290 billion cigarettes were produced. So, not unusual to turn things into ashtrays. This is a rather typical example of an ashtray. The shell, which would originally have been somewhere large like this, has been cut down in size. They've made little indentations and made separate pieces soldered on to hold your cigarette. And the maker included insignia, his officer's insignia from a Navy cap, uh, his rank insignia, and his occupational insignia. So all those things personalized it to him and provided him with a souvenir and a useful item. Some people got very creative with their ashtrays and this person in particular sat down and figured out just exactly how to add as many pieces as possible to the ashtray to the point that it's almost not even suitable as an ashtray because it has so many gadgets and gadgets on it. But it certainly makes a memorable looking piece. Other items include simple souvenirs like this 40 millimeter shell on the top and a five inch shell on the bottom that's marked for the Evans a destroyer Yep, destroyer, uh, and made a nice souvenir for a crew member. One of the more unique World War II pieces is the P-38. The P-38 is a very distinctive airplane, and for reasons unknown to me, it, is, it appears many, many times, whereas other aircraft are very seldom produced. 
you can see that you could have done a B-17 or a B-24 or, or a single engine fighter, but everybody seems to do P-38s. And it's not limited to P-38 units, uh, but just a very exciting and uh, dynamic piece. You see two examples here, one again an ashtray and one a nameplate for a desk. One of the more unusual pieces is this container designed to hold the host or Eucharist in uh, Christian or Catholic uh, mass. This piece originally was the hub of a Japanese propeller. It's been turned on a lathe, so considerable skill was executed in its manufacture, and a uh, nicely fitted lid with the cross. So somebody spent some time making this uh, and you also find whole sets, whole communion sets, chalice and, and containers that are made into a nicely fitted box, all manufactured out of spent shells, uh, kind of going after the uh, beating the swords into uh, plowshares idea. Engraving shells, of course, very, very nicely done. Uh, often with dates and locations of significance to the maker. Uh, this again, a cut down artillery shell from a naval vessel. There tend to be a lot of items that were made and saved by Navy personnel. Being on a ship, they didn't have to carry this around with them. They could just keep it in their quarters and work on it when they had time. Ships also had typically machine shops and other tools available that made the work much easier. Finally, we have an interesting piece, not often seen, but at times, uh, picture frames. Picture frames to sit on your desk, made nice keepsakes, sent back home to your loved ones with uh, photos of you or them in them. Here, 50 caliber uh, machine gun rounds, a piece of plexiglass, probably from an aircraft uh, windshield, uh, brass reformed nicely. So the skill of the maker is often very evident and sometimes pieces are a little crude. But all of these items are, are manufactured to occupy people's time, to provide uh, something to remember their service by. At times soldiers were also provided with material to use to occupy their time in uh, craft centers. In fact, the Army produced a technical manual on soldiers' handicraft that describes how to do multiple different types of handwork. And they also used this as a rehabilitation item for soldiers who had been injured. And so in their hospitals with rehab, they were provided with shells and tools and given the opportunity to manufacture things and regain the use of their limbs. All of these provide us with a little insight into what soldiers' lives were like during the war. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this brief segment from the vault.